The Bible says in 1 Timothy, the third chapter, the Apostle Paul writes to his son in the gospel, Timothy, and tells him how the saints ought to conduct themselves in the church. Paul explains the roles and duties and character requirements of elders and deacons and leaders in the church. Since the church is the pillar and foundation of the truth, Paul now focuses on Jesus Christ, who is the way, the life, and the truth. And he's also the head of the church, which the Bible says is his body that feels all in all. And then we get this astounding statement in 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared in a body, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, was taken up in glory. I want you to look at your neighbor. This shouldn't be hard at all based on what I just seen. But tell your neighbor, say, I don't know about you, but I still believe in miracles. Oh, come on. You know you believe it. You know you believe in miracles. That was spontaneous. Y'all verified I was on the right text and subject today. Uh, hallelujah. 1 Timothy 3 and 16 is an early church hymn. It draws parallels between flesh and spirit, angels and nations, the world earth and glory heaven. This hymn actually summarizes the gospel in a nutshell. Jesus born, lived, preached, vindicated by the Spirit, seen, believed on, died, rose again, ascended to glory. The authorized version of the Bible says God was manifest in the flesh. Paul says this revelation of God as a human being is a mystery. From the Greek word mysterion. You see, in the ordinary sense, a mystery implies knowledge withheld. But the Greek word mysterion does just the opposite. Mystery is truth revealed. You see, when we start talking about mystery, we're not dealing with, with Columbo or, or cold case or none of that kind of stuff. No, no, no. It's previously hidden truth that only God can reveal in his own time and in his own way. The revealing of the mystery of God appearing in the flesh Just grab that. It should stimulate our worship. It should cause a sense of humility 
that God who sat on the throne of glory would come down from the throne of glory to be with little old you and me. It should cause us to revere God and to lift him up and fill this house as you just did with praise and with worship. This entire month, we celebrate God appearing as a human being in the person of Jesus Christ. Since everybody is born on a specific date, ancient Christians began to use December 25th. If you really study this, you'll really find Bible scholarship tells us that more than likely Jesus was born in March or April. It doesn't matter when, matters that he was. He was born. God appeared in the flesh. How do we deal with this mystery? This mystery of the revelation of God in the person of Jesus Christ. All God and all man. We talked about this at ministers' meeting. The last ministry, we were all dizzy trying to understand this hypostatic union, this fusion of God and man as one. It is no understanding. Just like there's no understanding truly God. God is ultimately beyond human comprehension. And that is the reason so many people don't even believe in God. He's so up there, you don't even know he is there. As God, he's spirit. As man, Jesus Christ, flesh. As God, eternal, without beginning. As man, finite, with a beginning. As God, almighty God, spoke the universe into existence. As man, weak and tired, sat on the well in Samaria and asked the woman for a drink of water. As God, he need nothing and said in the word, and if I needed some, I wouldn't ask you. And as man, he needed not only his mother Mary, he needed his mama's milk. As God, he's the creator. As man, Jesus created in the womb of Mary. Who going who gonna to explain that? Not me, way over my head. And yet, even though this is a great mystery, it is also a miracle. Now listen carefully. It's not his birth that was miraculous. Mary did her nine months like all the other women. And I'm so grateful, again, speaking of what men and women do, yeah, uh, you know, I know he didn't send three wise women, but I'm glad he didn't make us men able to be pregnant. <laughs> Y'all can have that. Now, I know we don't get here without it, but I'm glad in his wisdom and knowledge and understanding, <laughs> he gave that to y'all and not to us. Mary went through nine months of labor like any other woman. Nothing miraculous about that. The miracle was in the virgin conception and the resultant birth. That's the miracle. The handbook of theological terms defines a miracle as the direct supernatural activity of God working contrary to the known laws of nature. We call everything a miracle. You see, ladies and gentlemen, waking up every day is a blessing, but it ain't a miracle. You see, this is a alarm clock. When I want to wake up at a certain time, the alarm... You may hit the snooze button but it go off. That ain't a miracle. <laughs> I ain't, something you get from Walmart ain't no miracle. It's a blessing to wake up because some people go to sleep and don't wake up the next day. So it's a blessing, but it's not a, a miracle. It's nothing contrary to the known laws of nature. 
we all know that to have a baby, you need sperm to fertilize an egg. I need some help with this. Before all this technology, such as in vitro fertilization, a man and a woman needed to have conjugal, I like that word, better than other words, conjugal relationships to produce a child. This first Sunday family stuff. Now I don't want y'all going home having explained things to your kids. Well, Mary obviously had AIDS. Where's the sperm? Mary was miraculously impregnated by the Holy Spirit and not a man. That's a miracle. That's against the known laws of nature. And Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 tells us so. It said this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but you should underline this. Before they came together, I wish I just could underline that, she was found to be with child through what? You see, ladies and gentlemen, miracles declare God's power at work in the world he created. Miracles teach us that God can do what he wants with what he makes. Miracles point to the near presence of God in a very troubled world. And I want someone who think you're far from God. God wants to be close to you. He wants to deal with you and your troubles and your calamities. All he has that you have a little faith. Draw near to him and trust him. And God can help you find peace in a troubled world. Peace on earth. Goodwill toward men. You see, most miracles in the Bible occur at times of great crises in the lives of God's people. Remember the ten plagues that fell on Egypt. They came as a direct result of Pharaoh's refusal to let the people of Israel's God people go to the promised land of Canaan. Like Israel, you and I are the people of God, too. And I hope someone will do this shortly. So how do I become a person of God? You, re you repent of your sins. God's not interested in getting your history. He's trying to buy his blood of his son to get rid of your sin-filled past and get you a fresh start. God's got a fresh start program. And when you repent of your sins and you're baptized in the name, of his son, Jesus. That's why I love water baptism. Water is supposed to make you clean. See, I have a, I have a problem. Sometimes, have you ever tried sometimes to go to sleep because you're just so tired? And then you have to get up and take a bath or shower. That's how I am. I'll say, I'm not that dirty. I'm not that dirty. I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> My wife will tell you it's true. Two in the morning, I'm up. I can't stand no dirt on me for something about me about that. I will get up. My sister used to laugh at me. Three, four showers a day. I don't like dirt. But I'm going to tell you, if you really want to feel clean on the inside, the day that you open up your heart, the day that you're baptized in Jesus' name, God knows how to make you feel brand new from the inside out. I got any people been cleansed. I got any people been made whole. I got any people that can say, the water chilled my body, but not my soul. Any people that can say, God is doing a new thing in my life. Hallelujah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we are the people of God. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Peter writes, says these words, you, you listening, not just Israel. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a people belonging to God. How dare we not come to church when we belong to God? That you may declare the praises of him 
who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once in your past, you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. It's just some, there's some praise us in this house. You now are the children of God. Ladies and gentlemen, what an awesome statement. And like Israel, there are times our lives are in crises too. I hope you're catching this message. I'm only going to be before you a few more minutes. These miracles pretty much connect to crises. God doesn't do miracles to show off. God does miracles because there ain't no way to get you out of what you're in. That's why some of y'all couldn't sit, sit down. Even some of you sophisticated people were, were, were running around on, on, on like miracles because you know what God has done. When you couldn't figure it out, God had already worked it out. You couldn't sit because the spirit in you was saying, you better praise me. You better praise God. I did a miracle for you. I did for you what nobody could do for you. You better give me glory. You better give me honor. You better give me praise. That's why I lift them up in the morning. I lift them up in the afternoon. And I lift them up when the sun go down. I wake up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and fall on my knees and give praise and worship unto a God who keeps on doing Great things. Hallelujah. You see, ladies and gentlemen, our lives sometimes, the Bible says it's like a house. That to be successful, God must build, be in the center of. Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2. Except the Lord build a house, they that labor, labor in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchman waketh or stand, but in vain. Brothers and sisters, here's the reality. How many of you trying to have some God-built lives? I know I am. From the moment I've been filled with the Spirit, I've been wanting my life to be led by the Spirit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me break this on down. We try to build our lives. We, 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 we young people out here now trying to catch at every age, there are things we're trying to do. And that's why these teenagers be walking around. These girls got on six-inch heels. About to, about to break their neck. <laughs> you know, people trying to catch something. They trying to figure out who they are. So in young ages, you got identity questions and who am I? Where, where, you know, where am I going? What am I going to do with my life? Then you get older and you, if God bless you, you, you get hooked up with the right person. And I asked some of you, where would your life be if you had asked God about the person that you ended up with? If you asked God, is this the one you want? For me, and if God said no, that you had enough wisdom not to find out why later. Then you get older in life. You want to raise your family. You want to be led. You want to be God. You want to achieve in your career. You see, all of these things that we want in life, what I want you to understand, God wants them for you too. But how can he give them to you if you're not following them? If you got to do things your way, if you are self-controlled, if you are self-controlled, you'll never find this path. Because this is not under your control. This is the Holy Spirit in control. Hallelujah. All right, let's break it on down all the way. Things can maybe be going well at some point in your life, but somewhere along the line, wreck, wreck it Ralph come along. <laughs> wreck it Ralph. I went to see Wreck it Ralph a few weeks ago with my three year old grandson, Lil Bill, had a ball. I am so glad I have a healthy family because just the simple things like that mean so much to me that we are in such re and he was sitting there three years old had his little 3d glasses on and had his popcorn to the side he was cool and we went to see Wreck-It Ralph and it's good too 
Even on an adult level, it has some really good moral points in it. Based on this video game, it's a, it's a house that's built that wreck it Ralph just comes along and keeps destroying. So it's based on this video game. If we will be honest, all of us got some record rounds in our lives. Sometimes record Ralph is supernatural. It's Satan who comes along to do nothing but to steal, to kill, and destroy. Sometimes record Ralph is are the vicissitudes of life. The tragedies that come out of nowhere, the, the hurricanes and the tornadoes, the, 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 the car accidents, the, the accidents and things that happen, the, the vicissitudes of life. Sometimes Wreck-It Ralph are our haters. Some people want you to fail. Some people can't stand it when you're doing well. Some people can't stand it when you have a good marriage and good kids and a good job and your family is doing well. Instead of you being a hater, you ought to try to figure out how they got what they have. Because if they got it by being in a better relationship with God than you, maybe you ought to go to the same place they got went to because you can have the same thing. So sometimes we got haters who lie and cheat, and they are the wrecking rouse in our lives. Sometimes they're the criminals and thieves of this world, and we have to lock our door. You work hard, and they come to take it. They're the wrecking rouse. There are a lot of wrecking rouse, but sometimes the worst wrecking rouse is us. Sometimes the damage we do to ourselves is worse than all the damage anyone else can do. Sometimes we are our own wrecked Ralph destroying our own lives. Well, how? Bad decisions, poor judgments, immoral living. A am I talking to anybody out here today? Drug, alcohol, running the streets. And what we're doing is just wrecking our lives. And let me tell you some of my personal testimony. I was wrecking my own life. I'm so glad that Jesus came in my life. Because let me tell you something. A life on the streets is a life that's going to wreck you. A life on the streets is a life that's going to destroy you. And you have to make it up in your mind, I'm going to at least stop wrecking my own life. Oh, help us, Jesus. We wreck it, Ralph, ourselves. We don't take care of our health. We refuse to obey God. We are a wrecked Ralph of our own and Ralphettes. I don't know any girl named Ralphette, but that's the best I can do. <laughs> but what else I want you to note in just a very quick review of the film, because I know some of you didn't catch it. In the game and movie, whatever wrecked Ralph wrecked, fix it Felix fixed. Note the little man behind. That's F, as Racket Ralph is wrecking everything. Coming behind him is Fix It Felix. As soon as Ralph breaks it, Felix is coming along. And Felix has his hammer. And Felix is going around fixing everything that Racket Ralph has broken. Oh, that's good. Stop, 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 stop. He done fixed enough right now. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when I sat there, I could see it. Oh, when I saw Fix It Felix, I thought about Fix It Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I thought about how Jesus fixes our house. I thought about how when things aren't working right, Jesus comes along to fix it. Jesus comes along with his spiritual hammer. When you done lost your job 
and you look like you're going to be wrecked by wrecking, lost the job, and wrecking. The next thing you know, fix it, Jesus, then come along. And you make it. You, you're still getting through. You done lost your health, and fix it, Jesus comes along, and you make it. You, you, your marriage is having a problem. Next thing you know, fix it, Jesus, to come along. You didn't even went through a divorce. But fix it, Jesus, to come along and still gave you peace of mind and peace of heart and spirit. When your children are driving you crazy, you can't figure it out. You can't fix it. But fix it, Jesus, comes along and fixes what wreck it, Ralph. Wreck. Oh, I love this. We hope that you have been blessed by this broadcast, and we look forward to you worshiping with us on Sunday mornings at our 1015 a.m. service. Also, we invite you to join us for our Tuesday night Bible study at 7.30 p.m. and Lunch on the Word on Wednesdays at noon. Please visit us online at www.VictoryApostolicChurch.org. If this particular sermon blessed you and you would like to order the full broadcast worship service, please send a check or money order to Victory Apostolic Church. We would gladly accept your credit card purchase Monday through Friday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Please include the broadcast title and number along with your selected choice of media, CD or DVD. 